Hi guys, today 14th of October 2021, OpenBSD 7.0 has been released. The main changes from the previous version were the new OpenSSH 8.8 allowed XenoDM logins at root dot as authority if it doesn't exist, added suspend option to computers that have TPM 2.0, various bug fixes and improvements on wireless cards supported by IWS, IWN and IWM firmware. Actually, IWM becomes faster because it can access the faster Wi-Fi letter as Wi-Fi AC. There is LibreSSL 3.3.4, Unbound 1.13.2, it has been added the support for PCI on Intel Tiger Lake, enabled the LEDs for the Ethernet port on the Raspberry Pi 3B+, bug fixes in cluster numbers for FAT1632 MS-DOS file system, updated kernel DRM to Linux 5.10, added with some improvements to the RISC 564 architecture. For example, they added the drivers for IWN, NVMe, UU Audio, and DRM. FDisk recognized Hi5 GPT partitions, added drivers to the C5 single, single board computer together with PCI support and Radeon DRM, another platform on which OpenBSD wants to improve is the new Apple M1, it is ARM64, now it is possible to create GPT partitions using FDisk and add support for NVMe. Here it is the official website that uh, will show you the biggest changes as I showed you before. They are doing big improvements on RISC 564 because it is an open source instruction set. In this way, people with different needs add different instructions to work better on their devices. And everyone that has the technical industrial capability to manufacture a CPU, they can do it without paying any licenses. This is why many people think that RISC-V64 is the future, for example in microcontrollers. IM64, Apple Silicon, they added support for various devices, for example USB 3 controller, NVMe, GPI GPIO controller, power management because the Apple SoC has a performance core and efficiency core and they are working on using them in the best way. Switch the Mac PowerPC to use LDLLD. Various improvements. SMP improvements. This is the default OpenBSD virtual machine manager. It only works in test mode. In, it can create other OpenBSD VMs or for example Debian only in the console, only in test mode. Bug fixes in user land. Hardware support. For example here. They fixed a bug in AMD driver. SDSC Tiger Lake support to PCH GPIO. It is the Intel GPIO controller. Here 
ThinkPad speakers now work on the ThinkPad S1 stream, wireless card improvements, security improvements, OpenSMTP 7.2 LibreSSL, OpenSSH 8.8, Here are the packages that have been updated. Chromium to version 93, it is the same as Google Chrome, GNOME, GNOME 40, it works on Xorg, KD Framework and Application, unluckily Plasma 5 isn't available, Mozilla Thunderbird 91 and Firefox 92, these is, is important because uh, the version of Firefox ESL has been a uh, big improvement. On Linux it was version 78, here they updated it to 91, PHP 8 and 7.4, 7.3 for retro compatibility, for example if your application requires uh, older version of PHP. Vim and NeoVim, XFC 4.16 like in FreeBSD, the Rust programming language and the shortcut, a video editor available on OpenBSD together with KDN Live. And here the core components of the system on this other website it is uh, all the change log if you want to read it more carefully and uh, here the download openbsd they made the big change to use the .img format not only for intel s64 and i386 but also for other machines for example arm64 whisk 564 to be more similar to Linux. For example, if you use Linux and you want to write your ISO to the Raspberry SD card, you will need to, to have the ISO in IMG format. This is why the OpenBSD community decided to use IMG format as well. I hope they will make great improvements on Apple M1 because if it will be able to run OpenBSD it will be very good to use on servers because it is a very powerful machine but only uses around 30 to 60 watt TDP it is a very good power consumption and here the main changes with the new OpenBSD 7 I will put links in the video description if you want to read all the changes by yourself more carefully. See you later guys!